A guy was texting their bro, saying that he needed some help and asking if he could lend him some money. And as the bro asked the guy what he did that time, the guy responded that he fought with the principal's grandson and just got expelled from school. So his parents got angry and cut off his living expenses for the next two months. So he asked him if he could lend him a bit at the moment and promised that he would pay him back once he found a job. The bro asked the guy how many times he has done that and advised that before he acts heroically next time, he should try to use his brain before acting. But the guy explained that he had no choice because the kid was harassing the girls in their class, so a real man couldn't let that slide, and the bro suggested that he didn't have to resort to violence and informed that he transferred 4,000 yuan to him, so he should remember to go to the hospital to get checked and not get hurt. The guy sighed and admitted that he was glad Sun Ming, the bro, was his friend because being a hero isn't easy those days. Suddenly, the phone gave a notification, and the guy mentioned that it was probably another reminder about the property, but when he checked it, it was a notification that indicated that Zhu Zhu had requested to add him as a friend. When the guy looked at who Zhu Zhu was, he asked himself to confirm if she was that streamer that went viral recently, and he exclaimed that she actually added him. The guy quickly inquired if she was really the famous Zhu Zhu, but the person apologized to him and revealed that she was just a fan of Zhu Zhu, and her name is Shen An. The guy got pissed, and he argued that she shouldn't play with him because she can't be Shen An. The guy, whose name was also Shen An, replied to the girl and noted that it was a coincidence because they share the same name and surname, but the person claimed that he was really him but 10 years in the future, and he asserted that he was an illegitimate child who was his poor and stupid version, so he was there to help him get rich and reach the pinnacle of life, and he predicted that if he doesn't believe him, he should go downstairs immediately because in 5 minutes, an earthquake will start and the popular spicy hot pot shop he often goes downstairs will collapse. Shannon wondered how the person knew that he was an illegitimate child, and he remarked that he never mentioned it. He concluded that he should just forget it because the person must be crazy and probably read too many novels, so he would just go get his meal. A few moments later, Shannon arrived at the hot pot shop and ordered that he would have the usual with extra coriander, and the guy in the shop agreed. Suddenly, the water in the glass it was in began to shake. Shannon was surprised, and he questioned why there was suddenly an earthquake. But he trailed off when he remembered the text message he received earlier. Shannon checked his phone, as he realized that the person had predicted that an earthquake would happen in 5 minutes. He looked at the time, and it was 10.26. Suddenly, the shop behind him collapsed. While the guy from the shop was trembling beside him, Shannon acknowledged that what the person predicted was actually true. Shannon quickly messaged the person, and as he acknowledged that he was incredible as there was really an earthquake there, he asked him how he knew, and the person reminded that he claimed that he was him from 10 years into the future, and he just didn't want to believe it, but he questioned what about now and suggested that anyways, they should get to the real matter. The person explained that the earthquake earlier wasn't a real earthquake, it was caused by the expansion of Yu and Yang, which led to ground shaking and in 18 days, there will be a huge change in the world, so Shannon must use that opportunity, or else he would die in 10 years, and he was telling the truth because he is him. The person mentioned that that night was the first opportunity for Yu and Yang to be released into the world, so Shannon should take advantage of the fact that many people still don't know about it, and before dawn, he should go to Kyanling Mountain in the western suburbs. He mentioned that there was a small lake to the north, and it would emit a fragrant gas in the center of the lake, which was Yu and Yang, and he would be able to smell it on the spot, and Shannon climbed the mountain as he was told. As Shannon continued to climb up the stairs, he remembered that the person instructed that he should just stay by the lake, not leave, sit quietly and inhale the gas, and he should remember not to be late and do exactly as he mentioned. Shannon was out of breath, and he exclaimed that he must be crazy because he actually followed those instructions from that stranger, and he asked where the lake was in that weird place. He muttered that he would just enjoy the moonlight. Meanwhile, police cars have gathered on the road. A lady came out of one of the cars and instructed that Tima should seal off the mountain while Team B should come with her to investigate, and that they shouldn't let any civilians enter, and the teams responded affirmatively. Shannon was quietly watching them, and as he wondered why there were cops there, he speculated if it could be true that the Yuan Yang would be released that night in that place. He hurriedly ran away and muttered that he should go check it first. With a flashlight in his hand, Shannon declared that he was going to the north side of the mountain foot. Shannon found a puddle of water and exclaimed that it should be there. He muttered that, luckily, he went around the mountain and didn't run into those cops. Dipping his hand into the puddle of water, Shannon remarked that it was not a lake but that there was actually water there. He sniffed it and exclaimed that it smelled so good, and he asked if it was the Yuan Yang that the stranger was talking about. Shannon followed the person's instructions and sat near the huge pool of water. 
He messaged the person and asked what the Yuan Yang expansion was. Shannon also asked the person how he was alive and if he was really him from the future. And the person responded that Yuan is something that people will start cultivating after a major change that will strike the world in 18 days. Similar to Kai in novels, as for him, he has already died because during his ascension process, he was betrayed and his soul was trapped in the void, which is why he could send him that message. The person mentioned that he was running out of battery, so Shannon should remember what he was about to say. That the release of Yuan Yang at that time is a precursor to the major change that will occur in 18 days, and after he absorbs the Yuan that night, he will contact him again. When Shannon read the person's reply that mentioned Ascension and Kai, he asked how it was even possible. Suddenly, Shannon was startled when the water in front of him became huge, and he cursed as he asked what was going on because it was just a small puddle just a moment ago. He exclaimed that he really couldn't believe his own eyes, as it was the first time he had seen a lake appear by itself. Shannon muttered that whether it was true or not, he should try absorbing it as the person mentioned. He started to inhale the gas and he awakened the talent devourer, which was a B-rank talent. As Shannon continued, he awakened the talent void, which was an S-rank talent, and the hidden talent future link, which was an SS-rank talent. The water suddenly swirled around Shannon as he continued to meditate. Suddenly, a light shone behind Shannon, and someone asked who he was and why he was there. Shannon was so startled that he fell into the water, and he asked for help as he didn't know how to swim, and the police, who were the ones shining light on him, instructed that he shouldn't move as they would save him. But to everyone's surprise, Shannon's talent, Devour, was suddenly activated, and the water began swirling so aggressively that it caught the police in it. The water suddenly dried up, and Shannon was lying unconscious on the ground when he earned 1,000 talent points. He looked so peaceful. Meanwhile, in Shannon's consciousness, he was in a desolate place, and he asked what it was and where he was. Shannon noticed the water in front of him, and he remarked that the lake was exactly the same as the one he saw at Kyanling Mountain earlier. He decided to drink the water. Shannon earned 10 talent points, and he was so astonished that he questioned himself if he had acquired a cheat code. He splashed water on himself, which made him continually gain 1,000 points, and as he exclaimed that it was working, he wondered if it could be possible that he, Shannon, is the main character. Shannon looked so delighted while continuing to splash water on himself, and he laughed and exclaimed that it was awesome. Drenched in water, Shannon sat on the ground, and he murmured that after 20 years of frustration, he could finally relax as the protagonist. But Shannon suddenly asked what exactly those talent points that kept increasing were. A system screen showed Shannon his details, including the talents he just awakened and his available talent points, which were 15,000. Shannon got curious when he saw the hidden talent, Future Link. He thought that it would be great if he could contact the person who claimed to be him before, because maybe he could help him understand that situation. Shannon decided that he should just forget it and that he should first figure out how to use those talent points. But before Shannon could click the screen, he was startled, and he wondered what it was and why there was a sudden earthquake. Shannon's consciousness came back to reality. He didn't notice that someone was standing in front of him as he asked himself what just happened. The female officer was standing in front of Shannon, asking him who he was and why he was there, but Shannon was busy blushing and drooling for her, thinking that he wanted to touch her. The female officer aggressively stated that they had closed off the mountain and asked Shannon how he got in, and Shannon nervously laughed and replied that it was a misunderstanding. Shannon was looking for an excuse, and when he saw his bag, he decided to point at it, and he explained that he was there for camping. The female officer smiled, and she concluded that Shannon was definitely lying. The female officer remarked that Shannon was really lying, and she urged him to just confess and she would let him go after some thought, but Shannon insisted that he really came there for camping, and he accidentally fell into the lake earlier, and couldn't swim, so he was saved by one of the cops. The female officer asked Shannon if he saw a lake. Shannon affirmed and that it was an immense lake. He pointed ahead and indicated that it was right over there, so if she didn't believe him, she should see for herself, but when he turned to look at the lake, he was surprised to see that there was none, so he asked where it was. The female officer glared at him, and Shannon was terrified, so he requested that he believe him, as he had sworn that there was a large lake there earlier and claimed that it even had a unique fragrance. The female officer instructed that the other officers should get Shannon out of there, and the other officers complied. A few moments later, the police vehicles were traveling the mountain road in a convoy. The female officer was in one of the cars, and she was filling out a document while she asked Shannon for his name, and Shannon provided his name, that he is 20 years old, and he is a sophomore who just dropped out of college. 
The female officer inquired why he dropped out, and Shannon explained that he was too poor so he couldn't afford the tuition. The female officer questioned how he has the money to go camping there if he can't afford the tuition. Shannon nervously laughed and mentioned that he just wanted to relax a bit. The female officer checked the contents of Shannon's bag, which startled Shen and, and she observed that he came quite well prepared. Shannon kept quiet, and he was wishing he knew it would be that bad, but he muttered that at least he didn't bring any ID with him. As if she could read Shannon's thoughts, the female officer glared at him and wondered if he was trying to fool her. She quickly pointed a gun at Shannon and demanded that he shouldn't move and tell her the real reason why he was there, which made Shannon panic, and as he requested that she not use it, he revealed that he would tell her. Pointing at the badge in her hat, the female officer warned that Shannon should not try to fool her again because she doesn't always follow the rules. Shannon took a closer look at the badge. He was alarmed when he realized that the badge on the woman's cap was not the cop's one, so he wondered who they were. Shannon declared that she would tell the woman, but first she should tell him who they were. The woman retorted that he had got some nerve daring to question her. She clarified to Shannon that the one with the gun at the moment is her. A few moments later, in the silent streets of the town, someone threw a bag on a couch. Shannon cursed and lamented that it was really unlucky because he can't use his usual tricks on someone who just casually pulls out a gun. Looking at the card of the woman whose name was Ban Waiwei, Shannon concluded that he couldn't discover anything based on that. Shannon asked what exactly those people wanted, and he remembered how Ban Waiwei pointed a gun at his head and asked him if he perhaps wanted to die at that moment. He shivered at the thought, and he decided that it was better to forget it, and that he would just go to a cyber cafe to distract his thoughts. At the cyber cafe, Shannon was looking intently at the computer screen. Shannon was examining the event of the Mount Dayuan volcano eruption, thinking that it was really spectacular and that there were even pictures and videos about it. As he continued to look at the pictures, he remarked that it looks like Kyanling Mountain wasn't the only place to host unusual events that night. His eyes were glued to the screen, and he noted that it was really tragic. Shannon recalled that the future him mentioned that a major change would happen in the world in 18 days, and he wondered if it could be true. He asked what he should do and stated that although he absorbed the first wave of Yuan Yang, there was no guarantee that he could withstand the subsequent major changes. Shannon commented that as for what changes the Yuan Yang could bring to him, he hasn't figured it out yet. He grabbed his phone and muttered that he should just forget it and first settle the place he would be staying for the next few days. When he opened his phone, he saw that Sun Ming sent him a lot of messages, asking him if he had seen the trending topics as there had been many strange things happening, urging that he should check the news quickly, asking him where he was, and mentioning that there was an earthquake there. Shannon responded to Sun Ming and explained that he was fine, but he needed a place to stay for the next few days, so he asked him if he could borrow his dad's place. But Sun Ming replied and questioned if he didn't die, which pissed Shannon, and he retorted that Sun Ming really couldn't wish him well. Shannon admitted that at the moment, Sun Ming is the only friend who could help him, and Sun Ming confirmed that it was his house they were talking about. While typing on the keyboard to search for E0, Shannon grumbled that if he didn't lose his house, things wouldn't be so complicated. Shannon observed that the girl Ban Waiwei looked like a cop, but she wasn't a real one, and there was no job description on her business card. There was only E0, so he wondered if it could be an abbreviation for some special department. Handing the form to Shannon, Ban Waiwei instructed that he should insert his name, address, and contact number before leaving. Back to the present, when Shannon searched for E0 on the internet, the internet indicated that no content related to it was found in the search. Shannon was pissed, and he cursed as he asked how there was no information at all and what those people even do. Meanwhile, someone was monitoring Shannon on their screen. It was the people from E0, and the guy monitoring noted Shannon has been searching the internet for various special events that have happened everywhere and even searched for their bureau's logo. So he asked Ban Waiwei if they should cut off his internet access. Ban Waiwei cautioned that he shouldn't startle the snake, and it was impossible for Shannon to find any information about their bureau, so he should continue monitoring. She confidently asserted that she didn't believe they could trace who was behind Shen and Back at the cyber cafe, Sun Ming picked Shannon up, and Shannon happily waved at him and greeted that he was there. Shannon thanked Sun Ming for coming to pick him up, and Sun Ming, who looked disgusted at him, warned that his house is brand new and he didn't even show it to his girlfriend yet, so he shouldn't mess around inside. Shannon reassured Sun Ming that he shouldn't worry because if his house wasn't shaking like hell, he wouldn't even come, and he couldn't possibly tear down his bedroom, which pissed Sun Ming and made him sigh. As he got into the car, Shannon mentioned that Ban Waiwei already knew his address, so his house wasn't safe anymore. They began traveling through the streets, and Shannon speculated that it seemed like he would have to hide at Ban Waiwei's house for a long time to come. 
A few moments later, they arrived at a huge house and Shannon was amazed. Shannon exclaimed that he knew Sun Ming was rich, but he didn't know he was that kind of rich. Tossing him a drink, Sun Ming suggested that he should just not dismantle his room and to hurry up and find a job instead of fooling around. Shannon caught the drink with a smile on his face and he acknowledged and thanked Sun Ming while calling him a young master for taking him in. A few moments later, Shannon was already alone in the bedroom, and while looking at the system screen, he noted that he didn't analyze what he won from absorbing that fragrance, and he didn't know what they could do. Looking at his talents, Shannon decided that he should see what they could do first. He clicked devour, and as it activated, Shannon was puzzled when he saw some lightning beside him. Shannon quickly sat up, and he looked so horrified as he asked what was going on when he saw that a huge orb of light appeared behind him. The orb of light began swirling, and it was absorbing the bed which made Shannon curse and ask if it was kidding him. Suddenly, Sun Ming came into the room and informed that he had come to bring Shannon a blanket. He and Shannon were both astonished when he saw Shannon sitting on the floor of the empty bedroom. Sun Ming quickly grabbed Shannon's collar and demanded where his bed was and how he made such a big bed disappear. Shannon asked Sun Ming if it was possible that he forgot to put the bed, and Sun Ming insisted that Shannon shouldn't mess with him because it was a van rest bed worth 32,000. Shannon grabbed Sun Ming's hand, and as he prompted that he should think carefully, he asked him how many times he had actually stayed there since he bought that house. He shamelessly inquired if it was possible that he had actually just forgotten. Sun Ming was dumbstruck, and he conceded maybe because, since Shannon mentioned it, he realized that it really was the first time he had slept there. He walked towards the door, scratching his head, and stated that he must have confused that with another house. Shannon felt relieved and exclaimed that he was saved, but he got so startled when Sun Ming abruptly came back to the room. Sun Ming awkwardly suggested that if Shannon could sleep on the floor that night, he would figure out the bed situation for him tomorrow. The morning came, and at 7.42 am, Shannon was woken up by a notification on his phone. Shannon checked his phone, and he asked who was disturbing his sleep so early. His eyes went wide open, and he cursed as he muttered that it was actually him. It was the future Shannon, and he asked Shannon how it was, if he finally believed him, if he had absorbed the fragrance, and if he had awakened any abilities. Shannon replied and affirmed that he really believes him and that he has absorbed the Yuan Young he mentioned, so he feels different at the moment, and he also mentioned that he has also awakened an ability, but he doesn't know how to use it yet. The future Shannon requested that Shannon should tell him about the ability he obtained first. A few moments later, Shannon remarked that it was strange, and he asked why he hadn't replied for so long after mentioning the ability, so he inquired the future Shen and what was wrong and if his ability wasn't powerful. The future Shannon laughed and confirmed that he did, but corrected himself and added that they both did it, so Shannon asked him if the ability was really awesome and urged that he should tell him about it. But the future Shannon confessed that he didn't know either as he was just guessing that it was very strong. Shannon was pissed when the future Shannon cautioned that he shouldn't get too excited yet and narrated about what happened last night. After telling what happened, the future Shannon revealed that Ban Weiwei is an earlier awakened individual, but according to what he conveyed, it seems that she hasn't awakened any abilities yet. But in two days, she would be investigating the North Suburb Manor and would be attacked by an unknown force, and she caught a bullet with her bare hands. Shannon's eyes twinkled, and as he marveled that it was awesome, he asked the future Shannon if she was that strong and to tell him if Ban Weiwei became his wife later on, which rendered the future Shannon speechless. In the void he was in, future Shannon couldn't help but ponder if he was that shameless in the past. Future Shannon declared that although he is Shannon's future and knows a lot of things, when he chose to contact him, the trajectory of the future had already changed. He messaged Shannon and stated that the catastrophic events like the Yuan Young outburst won't change, so he should remember that in a little over half a month, the world will undergo significant changes and the spiritual energy will resurge, so he should be prepared to become stronger and he mentioned that if Shannon didn't take that opportunity, he would have the same fate as him and all their efforts would be in vain. Shannon replied that future Shannon shouldn't worry because, with him as his cheat code for knowing about the future, he is not worried about not being able to become stronger. Future Shannon smirked, and he remarked that Shannon had to work hard and make sure he didn't die again. Meanwhile, at Shannon's room in Sun Ming's house, with only 17 days left until the significant world changes, Shannon was still lying on his bed. Suddenly, he sat up and proclaimed that if what the future Shannon described was true, he must take the opportunity. Shannon began thinking about what he could do at that moment. Suddenly, he remembered what future Shannon mentioned about Ban Weiwei. He wondered if there would be another Yuan Young outburst in the suburbs in two days. Shannon muttered that he wouldn't think about it and would know when he went there. He decided that he would go get something to eat first. A few moments later, Shannon was already eating in a restaurant when his phone made a notification sound. Shannon was puzzled that he had more messages, and he saw that he was notified that Juju, the little beauty, was currently live streaming. 
He checked the live stream out where Juju greeted everyone and announced that she would sing them a sweet song in the fine rain of spring right away. But in her comments, someone stated that room 364,241 was performing so well and they were doing fire breathing literally. So they should all go watch them. And another one replied to get lost because Juju is better so they would stay there. But the person commented the same thing again. Watching the stream, Shannon observed that Juju was very good and she sang so well. But while Juju continued to sing, the person from earlier kept spamming her comments with the same message about room 364,241 over and over again. And someone remarked that they should stop or they would report them. Shannon was surprised when he read about the fire breathing, and he questioned if Juju didn't care that they were even advertising in her stream. Juju continued her stream, and as the spam comments continued, some remarked that they would go take a look as they were curious, while others questioned why everything was in chaos and where the moderators were. Meanwhile, at room 364,241, the guy streaming was breathing fire, and the comments stated that he was amazing, that it was more interesting than singing, and asked if he was using alcohol. Shannon also checked room 364,241 out, and he commented that judging by the guy's expression, he doesn't look like he has been drinking, so he wondered if the guy has awakened abilities like him. Suddenly, the live stream got interrupted, which surprised Shannon that it got shut down, and he wondered if the power went out. Shannon noticed that there was a fire outside, and he wondered when it started because it was perfectly fine earlier. The building was being consumed by the flames inside it. Shannon suddenly began running away, and he exclaimed that something was not right because there was a Yu and Yang aura, the live stream room was shut down, and there was a fire outside, which was too coincidental, so he had to go and see. When Shannon arrived at the building, he could feel the Yuan Yang wafting around it. He approached a part of the building, and as he checked the wall, he noted that the aura stopped there. With the marks on the wall smearing on his fingers, Shannon figured that they were recent, so he wondered if the person from the live stream was there. Shannon began checking the place out. He walked in, and the building was desolated. Suddenly, someone with gleaming eyes appeared around the corner of the building. It was the guy from room 364,241 who looked so agitated, and he began releasing fire through his hand. Shannon was astonished, and he was barely able to dodge the guy's attack. The guy looked so injured, and when Shannon recognized him, he exclaimed that he was really there. The guy asked Shannon if he was also there to capture him, and he warned him that he wouldn't hold back. Both Shannon and the guy looked agitated as they measured each other out, and as Shannon confirmed that he was indeed the person from the live stream earlier, he wondered how long it had been since the end of the stream and how the guy got such serious injuries. Shannon insisted that the guy might have been mistaken because he was not there to capture him, as he was just curious, and as he inquired if he was the one doing the fire breathing on live stream, he questioned him who was trying to capture him. When the guy realized that Shannon was not with the people wanting to capture him, he asked him about the earthquake last night. Shannon acknowledged that he knew about the earthquake last night, but he also wanted to know where he was last night. The guy was about to disclose where he was yesterday. Meanwhile, people were observing them from a distance. Shannon and the guy quickly felt that someone was there. The people quickly jumped down and revealed that they were heavily armed. Shannon and the guy both cursed when they saw them. The two men grinned as they aimed their guns. Without any warning, they immediately started shooting at Shannon and the guy. Shannon quickly hid behind the concrete while the guy started running away. Observing the two men, Shannon commented that those two don't seem like cops, and they look like some unknown terrorists. Shannon found it strange, and he wondered why they were chasing the fire breather. He was about to ask the guy when he noticed that the guy was gone and there was silence. Shannon was enraged, and he remarked that the guy ran pretty fast and that he wouldn't have come if he knew that they would be after him too. He nervously came out of hiding, and as he addressed the two men as gentlemen, he pleaded that they shouldn't shoot because he was not the person they were looking for, and he politely asked them if they could let him go. But without giving him any answer, the men continued to rain bullets on him, and Shannon couldn't help but curse. 